over the side of the boat and you're just gonna gently lower it into the water. The well-trained scientists at the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center are teaching citizen scientists to help analyze oyster reefs using a camera rig. You will actually let it go. So we have a float on there. You won't anchor when you're doing this. You can just let this float. Um, and also moving away a little bit with the boat is kind of helpful because it might allow other organisms to, to come around that we want to see. How to set the rig, how to turn on the cameras, and why we should care. We're all part of a class with volunteers from the Severn River Association. They learned about our bay's powerful filters and the drastic decline of our oyster populations through the years. It's a program called Chesapeake Reefs, funded by a grant from the Chesapeake Bay Trust. I've spent every summer of my life on the Severn River, and, and I've lived here now for the last 25 years or so, and it's important to us. It's important we swim in it, we crab in it, we fish in it. Catherine Von Ruden is a retired trauma nurse turned SRA volunteer. Because of my background with science and research, I could get it into spreadsheets so that we could start to look to see how big were the dead zones, were they getting bigger, smaller, were they going and branching out from the center of the Severn River? Now we've got dead zones in all of the creeks up and down the Severn where there's essentially no oxygen. She and many others are bringing a wealth of knowledge to our water. This is the first time that we've been doing this sort of targeted, scientifically grounded videography of the oyster reefs. It's really important to us to understand the efficacy of our restoration efforts. We put an awful lot of time and money into restoring the oyster populations on the river, and we want to make sure that that money is being well spent. John Anderson showed us a picture that brings him hope. This is an oyster he helped to pull up last year in Upper Round Bay in the Severn River. And we're convinced that this is a naturally occurring oyster that it's, it's set naturally. There was a spawn seven or eight years ago and then those little, uh, the babies, you know, floated around and found some hard shell to sit on and then this is the result. The viability of the river is probably better than we think it is. And along with the Severn River Association, three other organizations on the bay will be bringing in citizen scientists. That means about 20 people will be trained in oyster reef photography. Shore Rivers, Arundel Rivers Federation, and advocates for Herring Bay will also have volunteers trained by CERC scientists. It's really important for us to understand how well oyster restoration is working in the bay. Um, so there's a lot of different restoration projects that are happening, a lot of oysters that are being put into the waters and understanding whether those are actually growing and developing into full reefs is something that we um, we really ought to know. They expect the underwater photography to begin in May or June. Volunteers, some who will use their personal boats, will follow coordinates for a location of where to get a closer look at the oysters. We've been doing a lot of oyster restoration work and I've been a big part of that and I'm really curious to see what our oysters look like. The hope is that there's a, you know, a long-term improvement of water quality. SRA is known to be the oldest river association in the country. Its water monitoring program keeps volunteers active and now a camera rig to check on oysters will add to their skill set to help improve the health of the river and the bay. For Chesapeake Bay Media's Bay Bulletin, I'm Cheryl Costello.